Yo, what's going on, Giants fans? Uh, it's your boy No Name. Um, basically, I don't even know if I could really call this an analysis video. This is just more of the day after I just came home from work. You know what I'm saying? It's like a wow. The second round actually just started because it starts at seven tonight. So it's, yeah, it's just a little bit past seven Eastern time right here. Um, I'm not really gonna be watching the second round as closely as I, as I am the first, and no, it's not because oh, I was so disappointed with our first round picks that I'm gonna just not watch the others. Nah, your boy has to go catch Endgame. You know what I'm saying? We we out here gotta go see Avengers sometime. But that's kind of the subject of this video, really. After I calmed down, after I had some time to reflect, I mean, like all day I've been thinking about this. You know what I'm saying? I went into work, you know, doing my job, and it's just playing in my mind. I'm just like going over scenarios in my head. I'm just going over possibilities. I'm like, do we make the right decision? It's gonna turn our our right. Uh, I watched a couple of vids, most notably um the boy Ron Effect and Fist Vegas, and I like I, I basically calmed down about the picks and I came to terms with it. And you know now right now it's not like I said it's, it's gonna be a little bit of analysis, but it's more so just like the reaction the day after. So first and foremost, um. After I uploaded that video, in case you guys didn't know, you don't follow me on Twitter or Instagram or you don't follow just like any NFL Twitter or Instagram, the Giants Twitter or Instagram. Basically, at the end of the first round, they traded their second round pick, number 37 overall, a fourth and a fifth to move back up to the 30th overall pick, which was originally the Chiefs, then the Seahawks, to get cornerback DeAndre Baker. So now, in the first round, we essentially had three picks, and we picked up Daniel Jones at 6, Dexter Lawrence at 17, and DeAndre Baker at 30. Guys, this is my initial reaction, and I won't try to change it, I won't try to lie to y'all here. My initial reaction was this was a terrible draft. That's straight up the initial reaction. I mean, I saw a poll today on ABC, like, you know, as I'm scrolling through the channels, it was like 78% of Giants fans said we we basically had the wrong pick at 6. But after a day of, you know, thinking, going over it, watching a couple of videos, I realized I'm like, no, it's not. This was a pretty good draft. If I was to put a grade on it, a letter grade, I'll give it a solid B. You know what I mean? Like, and the only reason I'd give it a solid B is because I... Because I thought at um when we traded back up into the first round, I really thought we should have went for a right tackle. Just about every single elite right tackle was left. The only ones taken, if I'm not mistaken, was Dillard and Williams. We could have still gotten Cody Ford or even Jawan Taylor, somebody that a lot of people thought was the best. I would have personally went Ford because, I mean, I just have a problem with players that drop that kind of scares me a little bit. Which is, I'm, I'm kind of going to be talking about uh, Dwayne Haskins a little bit in this video. So let me just jump right into the quarterbacks. Daniel Jones was the right pick, guys. And nobody wants to hear this, and I can't believe I'm saying this. But he was the right pick because that was the pick the organization believed in. They had hours and hours, thousands, maybe, maybe even tens of thousands of hours. I'm not doing the math on that, but they definitely had months and months, at least six, to go and evaluate every single college quarterback out of there to see who they wanted to pick and replace Eli. Not just replace Eli, but to lead the team into the future. And with Jones specifically, you could argue they had years and years because of his connection to Eli and his connection to the Giants. Now then, before today, I really vehemently thought that Dwayne Haskins was the best quarterback in the draft, but there has to be a reason he's dropping, guys. There has to be something that we don't know about I mean, my best theory is just because he's not athletic enough. You know what I'm saying? And there's 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 this weird thing going on around there. People think that Daniel Jones really is Eli Manning 2.0. Like, he's just a statue. No. Before you take up the popular opinion, and, you know, before you be a follower, go look it up. Go look up his stats. Go, actually, don't look up his stats. Go look at his tape. Because there's a lot of dropped balls in his tape. He had terrible receivers. If, if his receivers caught at least, like, say... 60% of the passes he sent their way, his stats would be like twice as much, man. I mean, look at his tape. There's a lot of drop passes, and this guy can move. He really can. He's a mobile quarterback. He broke off a, young, a, a run for 40 yards, and uh, the 40 yard touchdown in one of the games that he was playing. I can't remember which, but it's in the tape. Just look it up. Go on YouTube. 
and it's not just like it was like one off you know long runs no i've seen him where they legitimately ran a read option play for this guy and he took the ball and he ran and pushed through linemen to get to the end zone so he's tough too he's not eli manning 2.0 yeah sure it's kind of scary that they look very similar <laughs> like not gonna lie if if you just weren't a fan you saw a picture of them you'd probably think eli was his dad or something I mean, in a sense, he's probably like an older brother to him because, you know, he was his mentor and they had the same coach and whatnot. And they do have the same mannerisms, like extremely similar. He has the same derp face that Eli has and all that, and but the same reserved calm mentality, hopefully the same classiness. And even if he was Eli Manning 2.0, what's so bad about that, huh? Eli Manning 1.0 won his two Super Bowls and was the MVP of both of them. And technically, you know, when you got that 1.0, 2.0 ranking, 2.0 is supposed to be an improvement. And in my opinion, he already is an improvement because he can move better than Eli. <laughs> Sit him under the gear, he's already been learning for him from him through the Manning passing camp where he was actually a counselor at and all that, and by their uh, similar coaches. I mean, the same coaches. The reason, the main reason I think he was the best pick there is because I don't think an organization should be taking a quarterback that they don't believe in. And it's clear that if they took this dude over Josh Allen, who in my opinion was the best player available at that spot, so Gettleman did not go best player available, clearly. But if they believed in him so much to take him over this guy, Josh Allen, then I think we should trust him. I mean, for real, guys, you, you gotta remember, we like to sit here and play scouts, but we don't do no, nearly as much research as they do. We don't put nearly as much time and effort into it as they do. We don't have them come in and interview and do stuff on the chalkboard and all that. We just try to emulate them, and I, I did it because it was fun, but I want to say we should have more faith in our team and our organization. We should have more faith in Daniel Jones, and also, I don't want Giants fans to be hating on him. If you hate the pick, hate the pick, but don't go hate the guy. He's just a kid. He's only, what, 21, 22? He's done nothing wrong. All he's done is play football and be, a, be as good as, it, as he possibly can with everything around him at the college that he was. Don't hate him. There's a lot of hate being sent his way. And I know I don't have a big following. I only have 74 of you guys so far. But, you know, I want you to spread the message. Don't send hate his way. He's done nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? He's just a kid that's out there playing football. And, and he did it well enough to get drafted by the Giants. Now, going on to Dexter Lawrence. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in my video or not. Uh, but I actually really like this pick. I'll, I'd go as far as to say as I love this pick. A lot of people say... A lot of people don't like it because some people, they don't have him ranked as high. Personally, I believe Dexter Lawrence was the second best Clemson D lineman. I think it goes uh, Clay, Farrell, Lawrence, Wilkins, Austin Bryant. And the, the, the funny thing is, we actually probably have a good chance of getting Austin Bryant in the third, which would be amazing because he would fulfill an edge rusher spot. But yeah, basically, I mean, Dexter Lawrence, a lot of people see him as a run stopper. He's not just a run stopper. He's... He could really push the pocket from the middle. He could actually get to the quarterback pretty well. Um, I'm just I'm going off the top of my head here. Don't really have any stats because, like I said, I'm going to the movies after. But I'm pretty sure he has nine to eleven sacks in his career, which is good considering that most people consider him a run stopper. So if we put him there in the middle, because um, Dalvin Thompson has been slimming up, he says he wants to be the pass rusher. Have him on the outside, Dexter on the inside. He's basically a younger snacks that could get some sacks. That rhyme, don't hate the player, hate the game. Listen though, <laughs> Dexter Lawrence, great pickup, I love it. He was, like I said, I, he was my second rated uh, my second rated D lineman out of Clemson. He could stop the run and he could get to the quarterback. He could push the pocket and all that. I really don't know why people really, you know, have any type of problem with him. I, I thought he was a great pickup. Obviously, I would have wanted a Brian Burns, but he got picked right before us. I would have preferred an edge rusher, but I'd have no problem with it. And then we traded back up to get DeAndre Baker. And Baker, you could argue, is the best cornerback in this class. No cap, you could really argue that. This guy is the definition of a lockdown corner. He hasn't let up a touchdown in two years. Two years, people. Do you know how long that is? Do you know how many touchdowns the Giants alone have let up in two years? He does not have the flashiness and the rawness of Greedy Williams. And he does not have, like, I guess you could say... Actually, I would argue he does have the technical soundness of Byron Murphy. But he does have one thing that I love. And it's some type of 
like natural skill and talent and ball awareness that allows him to lock down people and cover them amazingly. He's really good. He's a really good hybrid uh, cornerback too. He can do man and zone. He fits Betcher's defense perfectly because he's a hard tackler also. I mean, you could really argue a case that this guy is the best corner. He was definitely the, the only one taken in the first round. So if you go by rankings that way, I guess, yeah, but... Yo, listen, he's probably better than Byron and um, Greedy. I didn't really have a rankings on the corners because I was like, those three are it, man. I mean, rotate them how you want. Similar to the safeties, I'm like, you could choose between uh, Abrams, Adderley, and Rap. Those three, yo, man, rotate them, flip a coin, whatever. I think those it's like a rotation of whoever you want to call the best. But, I mean, he's he was a great pickup. Like I said, though, I would have preferred a right tackle. Because unless we trade back up into the second round, we're not going to get a good right tackle at all this draft. We, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I mean, yeah, Gettleman has some type of nose for, like, just the hog mollies. Like, he has a nose for great D-linemen and O-linemen, as we've seen with Lawrence and as we've seen with uh, the, the Panthers' uh, right tackle. I forgot his name. My bad, I don't watch Panthers football, but I know the Panthers' tackles are amazing, and he was taken in the fourth round. Yeah, so he has he has a nose for them, sure, but... I would have preferred somebody in the second. I would definitely prefer a Cody Ford or a Jawan Taylor. If we uh, say trade, send another package to trade back up into the second round, maybe another three picks, and then we get our right tackle. Somehow we keep that third round pick. We get Austin Bryant because I think he could really drop there, or somebody like O'Shane Zimenez if he's not taken for our uh, edge rusher, and we'll be straight. I mean, honestly, like I said, this draft is a solid B, and the only reason it's a solid B is because. I would have wanted a right tackle at the spot that we took Baker, but I'm not mad with it. I'm not mad with it. It took me a long, well, not really a long time because it's only been a day, not even a full 24 hours, but I spent this entire day thinking about it because I had nothing better to do while, well, you know, while on the job. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I was just thinking about it all day and I'm like, yo, it's really not that bad. You can't let one pick if you hate it ruin an entire draft for you. All right. You can't let it ruin an entire draft for you. I think that Dave Gellman is doing a good job. I trust him and I trust the I trust the coaching staff and the scouting staff. You guys, you gotta remember they had hours and hours, months and months to do this. And they went, they did not go best player available, that's clear. I'm not gonna try and say they went best player available. But they definitely went best fit. And they definitely went with the team need. And it kind of worked out. You know what I mean? I Like I said, there has to be a reason the Haskins is dropping a lot of teams pass on him. I was surprised he dropped to the Redskins. I really thought if he was going to end up there, they were going to have to trade up to get him. But, yo, the Dolphins passed on him, and the Broncos passed on him. <laughs> there was only three quarterbacks taken in this, fir in this first round. Murray, Jones, and um, Haskins. And those are, funnily enough, probably the top three. I never did a um, quarterback ranking video, but... Um, you know, the, the consensus top three before the draft was Locke, Murray, and Haskins. Not necessarily in that order, but I would argue Jones would be better than Locke, mostly because, and I would argue that he's probably the third best quarterback in this class. I'd say he's better than Locke because I think he has a better floor than Locke. So we're talking about right now. Maybe Locke has a better ceiling. Who knows? But if you throw Daniel Jones in, into the fire right now, I think he'll survive. I think he could make it. He could probably win a couple of games. Um, down in the future, that's something else. And that's another thing about these quarterbacks. Y'all got to realize, okay, he's not the quarterback you wanted. So, Mitch Trubisky and Jared Goffs are perfect examples of quarterbacks who were terrible, but when they got a good coaching staff around them, they all of a sudden became great quarterbacks and Jared Goff went to a Super Bowl. You could argue Daniel Jones is the same way, and I'm telling you, we have a great head coach. We have a great offensive-minded head coach. If he did what he did with Case Keenum, why can't he do something better with Daniel Jones or even the same thing? You know what I mean? Quarterbacks at this point in time are really determined by who they who they're coached by. I'm like I'm serious. Like, sure you got Patrick Mahomes, but let's be honest here, guys. If Patrick Mahomes goes anywhere but the Kansas City Chiefs, does he win MVP? He doesn't have Andy Reid as his head coach. I mean, we like Mahomes coming out, everybody said, yo, he has all the talent in the world, but he can't win games. He went to a perfect situation in Kansas City where he had one of the best wide receivers, one of the best running backs, and probably the best offensive head coach in the league. And then he put up monster stats. You know what I'm saying? Uh, put him anywhere else. Switch places with him and Watson. 
I think Watson would have more success because I think Watson is just a better better overall quarterback than Mahomes. And y'all could, y'all could call it an unpopular opinion if you want, but I think he, I just thought he was a better pro, uh, prospect coming out. He went to a, a way worse situation than Mahomes did, and he still thrived. So at this point, I'm like, yo, quarterbacks, you, you could draft a terrible quarterback, but you put a good coach around him, you put some good weapons around him, he'll be probably one of the best in the league. You know, you've seen with Goff and Trubisky, man. Like, come on, guys, we're not... I want to look back on this draft in, like, say, five years and say, hey, we made the right decision. And I want to start that by believing in what we did. So I know this is going to be probably a really unpopular video and all that, but that's just my opinion the day after. I'm going to stick with it. Daniel Jones is my guy because he plays for my team. Whether he starts the first game or he starts next year, I'm going to be rooting for him. Dexter Lawrence is my guy. I'm pretty sure he's going to start. So is DeAndre Baker. Definitely going to be a starter. They're all my guys. I like it. I hope I hope we have a just as good, but preferably better, second to seventh round. Let's Come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go, Giants. All right? You're...